Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to share a quick story that happened to me recently. I was recently the victim of credit card theft. I didn't actually discover that I was a victim until I received notifications that over a thousand dollars had been charged to my card and my card and account was frozen. Needless to say, it was a pretty big inconvenience to the fun weekend I had planned. If you think it won't happen to you, think again. Hackers love to target places like video game companies, streaming services, and other commonly used websites. These companies are prime targets because they have a ton of customer data. They don't, however, have to adhere to the same security requirements and regulatory demands as hospitals or banks. So that's why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. The thing that sold me on Aura was how it monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. If it finds them, it sends alerts fast right to your phone or email. When I first signed up to the service, I was given a massive reality check. Aura found over a dozen instances of my personal information on the dark web. It found my username and password available for hackers to try and steal my info. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like someone else opening a loan or credit card in your name. They also have VPN services for safe anonymous browsing to keep potential hackers from stealing your info. Protect your family and yourself from identity theft by going to aura.com mtg or clicking my link in the description. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link. You can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members personal info on the dark web. A big thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike, piloting the partner pair of Ikra Shidiki the Usurper and Krom Ludovic Sopus. This is a mid range ad nauseum deck. It seeks to get ahead on board, gain life, and sink it into a bigger ad nauseum. Mike's opening hand contains an Emergent Zone, Arid Mesa, Ad Nauseum, Tainted Pact, Soul Ring, Deathrite Shaman, and his London Mulligan is a Noxious Revival. Next, we have our Mox Pearl patron John, piloting the partner pair of Thrasio Striton Hero and Bruce Taro Boris Herder. This deck seeks to create infinite mana through one of its many layered combos. It then either sinks it into Thrasios or a very large Walking Ballista. John's opening hand contains a Temple Garden, Mental Misstep, Ristic Study, Dramatic Reversal, Mystical Tutor, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligan is a Basalt Monolith. After that we have Ryan, piloting the partner pair of Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools, and Krom, Ludovic Sopus. This deck is a mid-range Grixis list, seeking to gain a lot of card advantage before landing Adnos, Peer into the Abyss, or Underworld Breach. Ryan's opening hand contains a Vampiric Tutor, Lotus Petal, Mox Diamond, Swamp, Ancient Tomb, Mental Misstep, and a Soul Ring. Finally, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic Sopus. This deck works in a very similar way to Ryan's, except it uses white for high impact spells to close out the game. Zack's opening hand contains the Steam Vents, Marsh Flats, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Ponder, and his three London Mulligans are Intuition, Swords to Plowshares, and Wheel of Fortune. Without further ado, let's kick off this earthy, easy, egregious, egocentric ejection. Mike won the Pumpkin Spice Latte Chugging Competition and gets to start us off. Mike draws a card for turn and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Deathrite Shaman and passes the turn. John draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Skull Clam. John passes. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Snow Covered Swamp. He casts a Lotus Petal. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Soul Ring. He sacks his Lotus Petal to help cast his commander, Krom Ludovic Sopus. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Krom. Zack takes it, and Ryan ends his turn. Zack draws and plays the Steam Vents into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts a Dragon's Rage Channeler. He pays 2 life to cast Jataxian Probe, targeting Ryan. Krom triggers, and Ryan draws. Channeler triggers, and Zack surveils Dark Ritual into his graveyard. Then Zack looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. Zack gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Mike ships his turn. John draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a savanna onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. John passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a command tower. He attacks Mike with Krom. Mike takes it, and Ryan passes. Zack draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tundra onto the battlefield. He casts Ponder. Channeler triggers, and Zack surveils Force of Negation into his graveyard. He then looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Krom triggers, and Ryan draws. Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Mike casts Tainted Pact. 
He exiles until he finds Mana Crypt, putting it into his hand. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He plays an Emergent Zone for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Crom triggers and Ryan draws. Dockside resolves and Mike creates three treasures. He activates Deathrite, exiling a land from Zack's graveyard to help cast Necropotence. In response, Ryan casts Delay. In response, Mike casts Swan Song. In response, Ryan pays two life to help cast Mental Misstep. Misstep counters Swan Song and Delay counters Necro and exiles it with three time counters on it. Plan thwarted, Mike passes to John. John draws and plays a Tropical Island. He attacks Ryan with Rassios. Ryan takes it and in his second main phase, he casts Ristic Study. In response, Ryan casts Vampiric Tutor. In response, John pays two life to help cast Mental Misstep. Chrom triggers and Ryan draws. Misstep counters Tutor and Study resolves. John ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts Demonic Tutor, paying the Ristic Tax. He fetches up a card into his hand. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Dockside Extortionist. Ristic triggers and John draws. Dockside enters and Ryan creates four treasures. Next, Ryan casts his other commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. Ristic triggers and John draws. Ryan activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing Dockside, drawing two cards. He plays the City of Brass for turn. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ristic triggers and John draws again. Channeler resolves and Ryan passes to Zack. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks John with Ragaman. John takes it and Ragaman triggers. Zack creates a treasure and John exiles Secure the Waste off of the top of his library. In his second main phase, he plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Phantasmal Image, paying the Ristic Tax. It enters as a copy of Dockside and Zack creates seven treasures. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. Chrom triggers and Ryan draws. Ristic triggers and Zack pays. Zack casts Sensei's Divining Top, Channeler and Ristic Trigger. John draws through Ristic and Zack surveils Mox Diamond into his graveyard. Top resolves and Zack gives the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike removes the time counter from Necropotence. Also in his upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts a Felwar Stone, paying the Ristic Tax. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. Ristic triggers and Mike activates Deathrite, exiling a land from Ryan's graveyard to pay for it. Krom triggers and Ryan draws. With nothing else, Mike passes. John draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn. He passes. Ryan draws and starts off his turn by casting Jessica's Will, choosing both modes, targeting John. Ristic triggers and John draws. Ryan adds 8 red and then exiles Ad Nauseam, Spire of Industry, and Windfall. Ryan taps the City of Brass to help cast Ad Nauseam from Exile. Channeler, Krom, and Ristic all trigger. Ryan pays for Ristic, Mike draws off of Krom, and then Ryan surveils Arid Mesa into his graveyard. In response to Nas, Zack activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. With nothing else, Ad Nas resolves. Ryan reveals a Geist Wave, Wheel of Fortune, Pact of Negation, Demonic Consultation, Mox Opal, Snow Covered Island, Imperial Seal, Bloodstained Mire, Deflecting Swat, Talisman of Dominance, Calling the Weak, Dress Down, Gilded Drake, Ristic Study, Wishclaw Talisman, Steam Vents, and a Force of Will, deciding to stop there. Ryan plays a Snow Covered Island. He casts Mox Opal, Channeler and Ristic Trigger, John draws, and Ryan surveils, leaving it on top. In response, John casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up an Angel's Grace onto the top of his library. Ryan activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing Dragon's Rage Channeler, drawing two cards. He casts a Talisman of Dominance, paying for Ristic. Ryan casts Thassa's Oracle, paying for Ristic. It resolves, and with the trigger on the stack, Ryan taps his Talisman to help cast Demonic Consultation. He taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for the Ristic. Consultation resolves, and Ryan exiles his entire library. With the Thoracle trigger still on the stack, John casts Teferi's Protection. Ryan sees his mistake as both Krom's trigger. Mike draws from Krom. Then Ryan attempts to draw from an empty library through Krom, and since it's not a May ability, he loses the game. Teferi's protection resolves and John's permanence fades out. The turn moves to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He activates his top, rearranging the top three. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his other commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He attacks Mike with Krom, knowing he would never block and lose his own Krom. To everyone's surprise, Mike blocks Krom with his own Krom. Both Kroms die, and Zack, staring a bit in disbelief, passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. Also in his upkeep, he removes a time counter from Necropotence. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He recasts his commander, Krom. Mike ships the turn to John. John's permanence fades back in. John draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He equips Skull Clamp to his Thrasios and passes the turn. At the end of John's turn, Zack activates top, drawing a card and putting top on top. Zack draws and moves the combat. He attacks John with Ragavan, Timna, and Dragon's Rage Channeler because it now has Delirium. Before blocks, Mike activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling a land from Zack's graveyard, having Channeler lose Delirium. Then John blocks Channeler with Thrasios. 
Chandler dies, John takes the damage, Zack gains two, and Ragavan triggers. Zack creates a treasure, and John exiles Red Elemental Blast off of the top of his library. In his second main phase, Zack pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He casts Red Elemental Blast from exile, targeting Rhystic Study, paying for Rhystic Study. Study is destroyed, and Zack taps his Ancient Tomb to recast Sensei's Divining Top. Chrome triggers, and Mike draws. Zack then uses his floating mana to spin the top, rearranging the top three. Finished up, Zack ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also in his upkeep, he removes the final time counter from Necropotence and casts it. Mike skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He plays a Breeding Pool and to play Untapped, paying 2 life. He activates Necropotence 23 times, paying 23 life and exiling 23 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. In his end step, he cracks his Emergent Zone, giving his spells flash until the end of turn. He activates Deathrite, exiling a land from John's Graveyard to help cast Chain of Vapor, targeting his own Mana Crypt. Crypt bounces, Mike sacks a land and copies the chain, bouncing Felwar Stone to his hand. He sacks a land, bouncing Soul Ring to his hand. He sacks a land, bouncing Necropotence to his hand. He flashes in a Mana Crypt. He flashes in a Soul Ring. He flashes in a Felwar Stone. He casts Culling Ritual. In response, Zack sacks his treasures and floats mana. He also flips his top, putting top on top. Then Culling Ritual resolves, destroying all non-land permanents mana value 2 or less. Mike adds 4 green and 6 black. Skull Clamp triggers and John draws 2. Mike casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Underground Sea and fetching up a Command Tower onto the battlefield. He casts Underworld Breach. He casts Notion Thief. He casts Windfall. In response, John taps his Tarnished Citadel to cast Angel's Grace. It resolves, and now Mike has to think of a way out. So in response to Windfall, Mike escapes Mana Crypt. He escapes Felwar Stone. He escapes Crop Rotation, sacrificing Command Tower and fetching up an Exotic Orchard onto the battlefield. He casts Mnemonic Betrayal. He exiles all of his opponent's graveyard. He casts John's Angel's Grace. Then Windfall resolves, each player discards their hand, and Mike draws 57 cards, which is his entire library. Mike doesn't lose the game, however, since he casts Angel's Grace. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts Mox Opal. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Toxic Deluge. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Polluted Delta. He casts Mox Diamond from Zack's Graveyard, discarding Verdant Catacombs. He casts Assassin's Trophy, targeting John's Cephalid Colosseum to make sure he doesn't die. John searches for a land and fails to find. Mike flashes in a Mana Vault. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He escapes Final Fortune, getting an extra turn. He casts Noxious Revival, putting Thassa's Oracle onto the top of his library. Finally, all through, Mike passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and with an empty library, Mike wins the game. What a crazy game. The team went again, so let's dive in. In this game, Zack brings back Timna and Krom, and his opening hand contains a Verdant Catacombs, Flooded Strand, Marsh Flats, Mystic Remora, Talisman of Dominance, Silence, and a Dockside Extortionist. Ryan brings back Tevish Zot and Krom, and his opening hand contains a Flusterstorm, Snow-Covered Swamp, Imperial Seal, Delay, Rhystic Study, Exotic Orchard, and a Dockside Extortionist. John brings back Thrasios and Bruce Tarl, and his opening hand contains a Wooded Foothills, Tarnished Citadel, Force of Vigor, Dockside Extortionist, Ledger Shredder, Fierce Guardianship, and his London Mulligan is a Consecrated Sphinx. Mike brings back Igor Shadiki and Krom, and his opening hand contains a Flooded Strand, Gamble, Soul Ring, Jataxian Probe, Mystical Tutor, Mental Misstep, and a Spell Pierce. And Zack gets to start us off. Zack draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Turn 1, Mystic Remora. In response, Mike pays 2 life to help cast Mental Misstep, countering Remora. Zack passes. Ryan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts an Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. Ryan passes. John draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He ends his turn. Mike draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and also plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Talisman of Creativity. Zack ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Swamp. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts a Rhystic Study. Ryan ships the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, John cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. John draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He taps it to cast Ledger Shredder. Rhystic triggers and Ryan draws. John ends his turn. Mike draws and pays 2 life to help cast Jutaxian Probe, targeting Ryan. Rhystic triggers and Ryan draws. In response, John casts Force of Vigor, exiling a green card, targeting Ryan's Rhystic Study and Mana Crypt. Rhystic triggers and Ryan draws again. Both are destroyed, then Jutaxian Probe resolves. Mike looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. Next, Mike casts Gamble. Ledger Shredder triggers and John connives Breeding Pool into his graveyard. Then Mike fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Gemstone Caverns. 
Mike casts an Arcane Signet and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays the Marsh Flats. He casts Talisman of Dominance. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Ledger Shredder triggers and John connives a reclaim, giving Shredder a counter. Ragavan resolves and Zack passes. Ryan draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Ryan creates four treasures. He casts his Commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. Shredder triggers and John connives the Birds of Paradise into his graveyard. Krom resolves and Ryan moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Krom. Mike takes it and Ryan passes to John. John draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He casts his own Dockside Extortionist. It enters and John creates five treasures. He casts his Commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Krom triggers and Ryan draws. Shredder triggers and John connives Kark Cran Ironworks into his graveyard. Thrasios resolves and John ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Jeweled Lotus. Krom triggers and Ryan draws. Shredder triggers and John connives. Mike cracks his Lotus to cast his own Krom. Mike passes to Zack. Zack draws and casts a Talisman of Progress. He taps his Talisman to help cast his commander, Timna the Weaver. Both Kroms and Shredder trigger. John connives and then Mike and Ryan draw. Then Timna resolves. Zack passes to Ryan. At the end of Zack's turn, Ryan cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. Ryan draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist. With the trigger still on the stack, John cracks his treasures and floats mana. Then Ryan creates five treasures. Ryan attempts to move through phases, and in response, John taps his Cephalic Coliseum to help activate Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a regrowth into his hand. Next, Ryan casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dockside. Krom triggers and Mike draws. Shredder triggers and John connives. Then Ryan fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Ad Nauseam. In response, John casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. In response, Ryan casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Fierce. Fierce is countered and with Ad Nauseam still on the stack, Zack cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts Dispel, targeting Ad Nauseam. With nothing else, Dispel counters Nauseam, the rest of the stack clears, and Ryan ships the turn to John. John draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He taps his Tarnished Citadel to help cast Grand Abolisher. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Ledger Shredder. Mike takes six, and John passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up an Ad Nauseam onto the top of his library. He draws and casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold. Shredder triggers, John connives, Krom triggers, and Ryan draws. Then Mike adds five black. He casts Ad Nauseam. With no answers from the table, it resolves. Mike reveals a Fierce Guardianship, Ancient Tomb, Mystic Study, Cyclonic Rift, Flusterstorm, Crop Rotation, Necropotence, Ragavan, Dockside Extortionist, Lion's Eye Diamond, Counterbalance, Wish Claw Talisman, Imperial Seal, and a Taiga deciding to stop there. He plays a Taiga. He casts Dockside Extortionist, creating four treasures. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Yogg Moth's Will. He holds priority and cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three red. Everyone knows this is game over for the table, so they begin to discuss what to do. This is the time to act since Mike has no cards in hand. After some deliberation, John cracks his Cephalid Coliseum, targeting Ryan, hoping he can find an answer. Ryan draws three and discards three. Unfortunately, he couldn't find interaction, and Yogmoth's will resolves. Mike casts Lion's Eye Diamond from his graveyard. He casts Cabal Ritual from his graveyard, adding five black. He cracks his LED, adding three blue. He casts Demonic Tutor from his graveyard. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Wishclaw Talisman from his graveyard. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ryan. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and with the trigger on the stack, he casts Demonic Consultation. Consultation resolves, and Mike exiles his library. Oracle's trigger resolves, and Mike wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Mike on both of his wins. Mike played his seat position very well this evening. It was a perfect example of winning second. Wait until everyone spends their interaction on the player trying to win and then swoop in for the kill right afterwards. He executed his plan very well, even when disrupted, and it spelled victory for him tonight. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.